Welcome to Touch a Turk Tuesday. Please consider liking our page or making a donation. My name is Wesley Ogle. I'm a division chief with Huntsville Fire and Rescue, uh, and I'm gonna show you one of our aerial ladders today. So this is ladder 12. Uh, it's been in the department about 10 years. It's, run, it's run off of wind drive out of station 12. Uh, it, uh, it'll go up to 100 feet in height and flow 1,200 gallons a minute uh, during firefighting operations. And what you're seeing here is, the, is, of course, the driver's seat. So this is where all the controls to operate the vehicle going down the road are located. Uh, all the emergency lights, sirens, uh, all of that stuff. Uh, the next door back, you'll see that we have jump seats, what we call jump seats. And this is where the firefighters ride and they are able to get ready to fight fire while on the road so that when they arrive on scene, they are ready to affect any type of rescue or fire, firefighting operations that are necessary. As we move on back the truck, this is the, the pump operators panel. So this is where all the water flow is controlled. Uh, so they can direct it to the cross lays, which you see uh, just here above the operators panel. Uh, and then also direct water up the aerial ladder uh, to the end where we can flow 1,250 gallons a minute from a nozzle uh, 100 feet off the ground. As I walk around here, you'll see that uh, the big structural members that are coming out to the ground, these are called outriggers. Uh, whenever we operate the aerial ladder, we have to be able to stabilize the truck so that we don't roll the truck over. So the ladder is, is capable of lifting a thousand pounds at a hundred feet of extension. Uh, so that is a lot of weight. Uh, so these stabilizers keep the truck stable during any type of lifting operations and also during water flow. Uh, inside the pockets of the truck, you'll see all types of uh, firefighting equipment, everything from smoothbore nozzles to hydrant wrenches, adapters, um, large diameter hose. All of this is important during firefighting operations. Moving on back, we have positive pressure ventilation fans. So this is how we remove smoke and control fire flow during firefighting operations. Uh, so these, these fans will move in excess of 2,000 cubic feet of air per minute. Uh, so that is a very lar large air flow. We have uh, lots of scene lighting. Um, you know, in, in Alabama, it's dark about half the time. So we spend a lot of money on scene lighting to make sure that we can see what we're doing, uh, minimize trip hazards, and, and make sure that we're able to see anyone that is in need. We also carry what, what's called salvage covers. Uh, so those are used to cover uh, valuables during firefighting operations that may not be damaged to make sure that we save all the content of a structure that we can and prevent any excessive damage. Uh, prying tools, axes, any, any kind of forcible entry tools we carry and keep handy. Uh, they're very accessible. And then as well as power equipment to be able to uh, force entry and, and as needed. <clears throat> as what you see uh, in the front of the compartment here uh, are attachments that actually go on the end of the ladder. So if we have to remove a patient that is not able to climb back down the ladder, we can put them in what's called a Stokes basket uh, and it will attach and, and secure into these cradles so that we can maneuver them back to the ground safely. Now the ladder is actually operated from what we call the pedestal, which is at the top of the rear of the vehicle. Uh, so you can see the, the operator's panel for the aerial ladder at that location. Uh, most of the operations are actually performed from the platform. There's another pedestal in the platform at the end of the ladder. Uh, so that if you're on the end of the ladder, you can actually maneuver the ladder to where you need it to be. At the back of the vehicle, we have a lot of what we call ground ladders. So, you know, we can, we can throw ladders up against the side of the structure during uh, rapid intervention crew operations and things like that. Uh, it gives us a quicker access to be able to remove our own personnel or any trapped victims as needed. Once again, thank you for uh, joining us for this virtual version of Touch a Truck. Uh, my name is Wesley Ogle with Huntsville Fire and Rescue, and this is just one of the many apparatus that we have in service to make sure that we keep you safe.